so sore, guys. I'm back at working out again. Wish me luck. Hello, I'm Judy, the organizer and creator at Rescue My Space. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. So today is special because I will be answering you guys' question. This is the first Q&A for Judy, the organizer. Well, for the Judy, the organizer channel. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to be looking at my screen over here because there lies the questions. So I'm going to be answering business questions first and then I'll do organizing questions. So let's get into it. So the first question is from Angela Marks TV. And her question is who did your website? my mentor. So I've had a mentor for about six years now, and he's also a business owner. He's the owner of, or the co-owner of my Butler, which is a virtual assistant company. It's amazing. He's great. Ugh, godsend. Funny thing is I found him on micro mentor after reading the book from uh, Damon John and ugh, the best thing I could have ever done. So he's the one who created my website. Um, he is actually a Squarespace website developer and he was able to create such a beautiful website. I am absolutely in love with it. I've of course changed it over time, but the framework of it was done by him. It took us about four months to create it because I was going back and forth, changing things, adding things. And fun fact, when I first got my website done by him, I had nothing but stock photos on it. I had none of my before and after photos. Nothing was mine with the exception of maybe my photo. And over time, most of the photos, at least 95% are all mine. So yeah, you start somewhere guys, just because you don't have photos, just because you haven't maybe even done the service that you are offering doesn't mean you can't start. So that's my advice to you. So the next question is from, Tosh Renee and her question is, or his question is living in Texas, how did you structure your business legally? So I went to the secretary of state website and I'm sure most of us who live in the US have access to that. And I applied for my DBA and then months later I got my LLC and yeah, I did it myself. I had no help, even though I'm not saying you don't need help. I personally can be a DIY kind of girl. So I did it myself. But then I took it a step further and trademarked my business. That I sought out help. I used a trademark attorney here in Texas or in Houston. She's amazing. And it took about eight to 10 months to trademark my business. During that time, I was shitting bricks because I was afraid that somebody may happen to own the same business name as me. But thankfully, no one did. And everything was in the clear. And Rescue My Space is trademarked. So for the DBA LLC, I did it myself. It's really easy. Trademark, I hired someone because it's a little bit more extensive. I don't even know if you can do it by yourself. I'm not sure, but yeah. So my last question is from Jacqueline Ocampo and her question reads, love your work. Thank you. She says, do you happen to have a video about how you do your invoices for your projects? No, I don't have a video on that, but I can quickly tell you I use QuickBooks. I do have an accountant and he uses QuickBooks. So I use QuickBooks from him or through him. And that's where I create from, that's where I create all my estimates, all my invoices, all my payment links, everything is through QuickBooks. It combines all of my financials that are involved in my company and it just makes accounting so much easier. So yeah, that's what I use. I've used FreshBooks. I've used Word documents where I used to do it myself, which is crazy. I have also used PayPal, but QuickBooks, best platform ever. So yeah, that's what I use. All right, so let's go on to the organizing questions. So this next question is from Dana M. Cohen, and she asks, what are your non-traditional office paper organization and filing cabinets don't work for me? So trust me, I understand one thing about filing cabinets is you have to create a habit out of going in and out of them. If you are someone who has a lot of paperwork and you need somewhere to put them, filing cabinets are perfection. Um, plus they put it away. You don't have to look at your paperwork or your documents all the time. What I do use in between is paper trays. So I honestly, I file my documents every quarter. So I don't go into my filing cabinet all the time because I just don't want to, but I have my paper trays in my office, I have about five and they are categorized 
differently and they hold different categories of different documents I have. Some hold more categories than others, but yeah, paper trays are it. If you are absolutely not a file cabinet person, you're like, I don't even wanna create that habit, then maybe using wallpaper organizers are great. There are a few, they have different divisions and that may be something you can use or even desk organizers that sit on your desk that are great. They do hold up to like 20 folders, but at least it's in your face and you're not having to go to an actual filing cabinet. File cabinets work, which is why I think they're in existence and they just put all your documents in literally one place. So, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Next question is from DM Creates. And her question is, makeup organization bin help is her question. She is more of a mini minimalist than a minimalist and products for deep linen closets. And she gave me her dimensions. So basically you're asking what's a good way to organize your makeup if you are more so a midi minimalist and not a minimalist. Because if you watch my video, I am a minimalist when it comes to makeup. I literally use one bin and I still do. Best decision I could have done. And, but you are not that. You are a midi minimalist, meaning you don't have a lot of makeup, but you have some. I would suggest that you use maybe a few bins, maybe not just one, but like four. You can create, you can categorize each bin to hold different type of makeup. And then you can place them on your deep shelves. You can have two in the back and two in the front. That is the simplest way to organize your midi minimalist makeup. If that doesn't work, maybe adding a rolling cart to your deep shelves will work because rolling carts act as a drawer and it gives you access to the back of the shelf. If that doesn't work, maybe adding makeup organizers that sit on a countertop to your space. But if that doesn't help, maybe adding makeup organizers to your shelf will work. The only thing is because your shelf is deep, you're gonna lose sight of some items. So maybe bringing them onto the countertop will be great. Um, my favorite, my favorite, all time favorite makeup organizer, even though they do also hold like skincare and hair stuff, is the Joy Collection. Honestly, their makeup organizers and other organizers are hands down the best that I've seen on the market. They consider everyone. And best of all, they actually sit on the floor. There's a platform it actually sits on, but they're meant to sit on the floor rather than sitting on the countertop so you can have access to your countertop and your countertop basically stays clear. So yes, definitely would recommend those. And because you are more so a midi minimalist, you probably only need about three organizers. So yeah, definitely check them out. Their link is below, but that's pretty much what I would suggest for you. So the next question is from Rory Corley. So she's asking, what is your favorite organizing project you've done and why? Great question. So honestly, I love all the projects that I've done, but my old time favorite is probably the large pantry that I organized. I actually did film it. So if you watch my videos, you probably saw that. But that is my favorite project because, first of all, the client was so lovely and she was just open to all of my suggestions, all of my products that I suggest. She was just like, you know what you're doing, there you go, you be the expert. I was able to use all of my creative juices in here and just spill it out and I was able to create a beautifully functional and organized pantry. So, and also she did have a large budget. So I was able to buy the products that I believed would fit in her space, which made it so much easier to really and truly create a functional space because she also had kids. So I did have to consider that as well. But yeah, that was probably my favorite, favorite project. Plus that was my first extremely large pantry. So the next question is, I'm not sure who it's by, but she says, have you worked with a pantry that has wire shelving? So there's more questions. Can you also give me tips on using the chalkboard labels? I'm assuming the chalkboard labels that you've seen in my videos. And she also says, how do you make the sizes and have you found any chalkboard labels that work off of Amazon. So there's a few questions there. So the first answer is yes, I have organized a pantry with wire shelving. I actually filmed it and the link is down below, but it was such a great pantry. It was actually a really small pantry in an apartment. And what we did to make the wire shelves less daunting is we added shelf liners. We added a thick plastic shelf liner onto the onto the wire shelf, which created a solid foundation and allowed us to add 
stuff to it without the items falling, which is really important. That's the thing with wire shelves. A lot of these builders don't unfortunately consider the people that would actually be using said wire shelving, which makes it so difficult to use, but adding shelf liners to it will really definitely help because again, it creates a solid foundation. So anything that sits on it has, has a solid foundation to sit on. Tips on using chalkboard labels. All chalkboard labels are pretty much all the same. There's stick on chalkboard labels, there's clip on chalkboard labels, there's hanging chalkboard labels. So it just depends on what product it will be sitting on. If you're asking tips on how to use them properly, I probably would say you make sure you're using a good chalk marker. My favorite one, hands down, is from Chalk Ink. It is beautiful. It has an extra fine tip, which is the most important part which is why my labels come out the way they do. And I actually buy them in bulk from the actual company. The uh, Container Store does carry them and so does Amazon, but the ones on Amazon is like a few dollars more and then the Container Store does not carry extra tip. So I go straight to the source. And as far as how do I size them or how do I cut them, I use a cutting board and the size of the label depends on what item it'll be sitting on. And then as far as what's the best one to buy from Amazon, I usually go for the 3M chalkboard tape. That is my favorite hands down. It is extremely customizable and it is thin enough to cut, but still looks really great on any product that sits on. So yeah. <laughs> so the next question comes from Tonya Schultz and her question is, could you recommend how to organize very tall boots and high heels with very tall heels and or platforms? She says, I have a ton of beautiful tall heels, but the various organizers I've tried so far are never tall enough and my heels end up squished. So first of all, I'd like to know what organizers you've used. That would have helped me a lot, but for your boots, I'm sure you probably have heard of this, maybe adding some type of boot organizer to it to keep the structure and allow it to stand up. Pool noodles are also great. If that doesn't work, there are also boot hangers out there that will allow you to hang your boot and place them on a closet rod. So those are great because they keep them upright and they're hanging so they don't have to sit on their own. I'd also suggest maybe adding or using shelf organizers or shelf dividers per boot so it can keep the structure because shelf dividers create a barrier between the item that sits next to it and maybe placing them next to every boot or every very tall heel that is, that does have a platform will of course hold it together so they don't fall. Another option would be to use a shoe organizer that has a lid. Of course, if your heels are really, really tall, then you do have to consider the different size shoe boxes but if that doesn't help, maybe using an underbed shoe storage for your items. Those are great because they can hold about five to 10 pairs of shoes. And once you're done placing your footwear in it, you just kind of zip it up and store it under the bed. They can also be stored really anywhere. So yeah, that's what I would suggest. But let me know again, what shoe organizers you've used in the past. And that will help me kind of answer it a little differently if what I suggested doesn't work. Okay, so the next question is from S. Shimmer. What a cute name. And her question is, my jeans and casual shirts that are on my shelves stay getting messy. I need help on my foldings. Do you have any tips? Yes, I can. I actually have a channel called Folding with Judy and there you can find a lot of folding videos that I've created in the past, though I don't upload there enough. But what I'll do is I'll link a few folding videos down below which can help you fold or learn how to fold. But if you're not asking me about folding, maybe you're asking me, I just don't feel like folding, then I would suggest that you add your shirts or your jeans in bins because what you can do whenever you don't feel like folding, you can just throw them in the bin and if the bin is solid, you won't see it. And of course, maybe within a week or two, you can then fold them up again and put them back in the bin and put them away. But that's just a great way to still have like an aesthetically pleasing closet without the mess showing through. <laughs> Another thing I would suggest is maybe you shouldn't fold your items and you should just hang it. Uh, folding isn't for everyone, especially because it's pretty tedious. You have to keep it up. And if that's something you just can't do, it's not your ministry, then maybe hanging all of your items, at least your jeans and your tops are your best options. All right. So the next question is from Just Joya. And her question is, how do you balance organizing your items and being visually appealing? She also asks, how do you measure your space? 
to buy the right product and she's asking for a step-by-step -step playlist of how to get organized. So the first question is, how do you balance organizing products and also creating a visually appealing space? So basically, how do you create a functional and an aesthetic pleasing space? Basically, whenever I'm organizing any space, I have to consider a few things. One, what items need to sit on the area that needs to get organized. So for instance, if it's a shelf, what items will be sitting on that shelf um, and how can I organize it to where it's functional, to where you always have access or easy access to it. And then I consider the organizing products and in order for me to make sure that it is visually appealing, at least the spaces, I usually consider colors, I consider scale, I consider measurements, um, will it fit? There's a lot of things I consider when it comes to creating a visually appealing space as well. And in order to do so, it's important to measure. To measure, you just use a measuring tape and you always measure the width. That's probably the most important, for me at least, dimension that I always capture is the width the height, which is also important, the depth, which is also important, or the length. Actually, all the dimensions are important. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I hope I answered that question. And also, in order to make sure the space is functional and aesthetically pleasing, you do have to declutter. You can't have too much stuff because the more stuff you have in a space, the harder it is to create a visually appealing space unless you don't mind having a lot of organizers in that area. Some people don't mind. I'm not saying I don't mind because clearly if you look over here, I have a lot of organizers here, but there's a lot of things I consider to make sure that it also looks good. So I don't know if I answered that question. I know it's like a, it's a lot in that question, but hopefully I did. If not, let me know in the comment section below and I'll answer it better. And then as far as the step-by-step -step playlist, I don't have one, but I can create videos or people have been asking me to do this, but I can create a course. Yes, it will be paid, but it will be detailed. So, so yeah. So the next question I have, it doesn't have a name, but it says any suggestions for storage or container holding sugar on the kitchen countertop or should sugar be placed out of sight in the cupboards? So it really just depends on your preference. I personally have my sugar in a glass container sitting inside my pantry. But every time I open that pantry, I have these beautiful canisters that I see. And then on the flip side, I do have my salt and my protein in canisters that sit on my countertop. Those sit out because the canisters that they sit in are really beautiful and they kind of flow with my kitchen. So it just depends on your preference. If you use these items, if you use sugar all the time, yeah, make it accessible, put it on your countertop, put it in a lovely container and have access to it if you don't put it in the bin, throw it in the cupboard. And again, it just depends on your preference and how you like to function inside of your kitchen. So this question is from Rini Handler and she says, hi Judy, hey. Her question is, what do you do when the client doesn't have the money to give you when buying the supplies needed to get the job done and make it pretty? Do you ever make containers out of recycled items or could you show us a job that you did that? What do you do when a client can't afford basically organizing products? Honestly, I don't really get clients that can't afford organizing products. Usually if the client can afford my services, they can afford organizing products. But let's say I did. Personally, no, I don't do any DIY projects for clients because that is a time consuming thing. But if they wanted to create the DIY container, I would of course use it as we organize. So I do get clients who don't want new organizing products and they already have them. So I just use what they have. And I also do get organ I do get clients who have a budget that they wanna stay under. And in those cases, we usually just use products from like the dollar store or the Dollar Tree or really inexpensive products that you can find at really inexpensive stores. But that happens really rarely. And if that's the case, they usually go out and buy it. I do usually give them suggestions so they kind of know the vision that I have. But personally, I do not create products out of recycled goods. But I have created a video where I've showed you how to create organizing products out of recycled goods. And I'll leave the link in the description box below. That's it. I love these questions. They were great. Hopefully my answers answered your questions. And hopefully in the next three to four months, I'll do another Q and A and you can ask me more questions. So you already know what time it is. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so very much for watching this video. And as always, I'll see you soon. Bye.